everybody, welcome back to Omega Zone Gaming, and today we have South Park The Fractured Butthole. So this game is a lot of fun. It took the formula started in Stick of Truth and improved upon it. So the base story is that Cartman is basically looking for a cat for a hundred dollar reward to start a superhero franchise as it were. <laughs> Something along the line of the uh, Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm not going to give too much details of the story, uh, but that's the baseline. As you can see, I'm rocking my uh, Assassin's Creed armor, but there is way more. Uh, the story is a 5 out of 5. It is an excellent story. It is South Park to its core. So, how did the graphics look? Well, look at it. It is South Park. Down to your kid. Uh, you know, every building looks like they're supposed to. This does look like South Park. Okay, let's do this real quick. Yeah, watch this. This is going to be funny. Yes, you just saw what you thought you saw. So everything in this game does hold out. Its story is just something insane. And the graphics just, it feels like South Park. You know, even going into houses, it feels like okay. South Park. Okay. Well, Thanks, and you can take selfies with all the characters. You get followers the first time you do that, so that's something unique. And that improves your influence. And it does look like an Instagram thing. So, the graphics are a 5 out of 5. It is probably one of the most impressive <laughs> looking, shall I say, South Park style games. I mean, I know there's not a lot that uses this cardboard uh, cutout style art, but it does it really well. And I appreciate that. Audio. A 5 out of 5 right away. I'm going to say, if you love South Park, this audio is South Park. The music is South Park. You know, the voice acting is all the voice actors. Uh, the humor is right on point for the voice actors. You know, uh, gameplay sounds are just insane. Uh, they'll make up the, for the fact that they're playing a game, essentially. You know, uh, when... Uh, Kyle uses his human kite eye ability to go pew, pew, pew. Oh, cool. Okay, I gotta see if it will. Maybe if I throw a firecracker at it first. No, damn. I was hoping it would blow up. You guys know that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> There's a big wall blocking off Canada. Canadian wall. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Now, on to the gameplay. <laughs> the 
Let's see if I can find a fight. We'll go into the menus first. So, in your menu, it's like a cell phone this time around. You have your map, which shows off South Park. In all its areas. I still gotta find that guy's wallet. Costumes, which a lot you change all your armor. As you see, I got quite a bit, actually. I just love the Assassin's Creed attire. There's even a downloadable Iron Man like DLC called uh, Iron Inventor Suit, which I don't have enough points for right now, unfortunately. And you can even, just like the first game, change your hair, facial hair, and your makeup. Uh, you have your powers. So, once you get far enough in the game, you unlock everything. <clears throat> and I do mean everything. So, you're not going to be fully stuck at all times with just one thing. And you can mix and match your powers too, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's. What I usually do my healing to my co-workers. Let's try Backfire Blast. You have your allies, which you can switch out at any time prior to combat or right before the start of most combat scenarios. You have your character sheet, which gives information on your background, titles, allies, summons, and your time farts. You have your settings gallery, which just allows you to customize the phone, basically. Inventory, which shows your consumable mission items and components, which you will use for crafting, which we'll get to in a second. Artifacts. So you'll find things called artifacts in this world, and you can equip those to increase your might. You also have a DNA power. I have ungodly strength attached right now, but you can switch them up just based on what you have equipped at the current moment. And then crafting. So when you want to craft, you have to find parts in this world. And then you can combine those parts into craftable tools. So let's say I want to make Annihilator Overthruster. Well, those are the components I need, which looks like... And they'll tell you tech, duct tape, and what was the other one? Cloth, I'm presuming. Doesn't show me that final base upon it, but I believe that's cloth. Oh, okay, so it was duct tape. Duct tape, tech, and tools, and then you just craft it, and that'll increase your crafting level. Your crafter rank can go up to 20. And then, of course, once you do it, you'll have a new artifact. Then you have Koonstagram, which is basically the Koon's Instagram. You take pictures, you get allies, it tells you, you know, information. Uh, unlike Stick of Truth, the you stop storage facility is only really used one time. You can't get back in there afterwards. And a lot of the same areas from the first game do exist. Uh, there's a few new areas. So let's go into combat. I'm pretty okay with this party. I like Captain Diabetes. So you move around on a grid this time around. Then you choose your attacks. So Square for an instance, I mean X for an instance, can reach him. 
no, it's square. He hit X to confirm. So square can hit him. I'll hit X to confirm, and that'll do my damage. Now I gotta push X multiple times to actually launch that particular attack. So I can hold L2 and R2, which will let me do a summon a past version of myself, pause combat and punch enemies freely, or gl glitch time to cancel an attack. Pausing also glitches the enemy's attack. So I can now go right down here, hit this guy several times, and get an advantage. And he died. Now, I was in his field, so I'm burning right now. So what I can do with him to get rid of the burning is I have antidotes. So let's go ahead and give my character an antidote. And that will cause regeneration and for my attack to go up. Once again, I'll do a distance attack, but this time it gives me a protected shield. Yeah, this is another thing, microaggression. If they say something insulting, you can actually get a free hit on them. So as you see, I hit him into Captain Diabetes, and it actually did more damage. There are also elemental attacks you have, this ice one being the perfect example. So what that'll do is not only does it damage him, it'll pause his next turn, if he survives that long, that is. So we'll send Captain Diabetes in to hit him. We'll end his turn since I can't do anything with him. And we'll use the hyper beam thing again. And that's how you level up in this game. Just like any RPG. You fight, you survive, and you level up. The difference is, is they added the grid system. So there's not a lot change from the first South Park game. But they added this movement system for an ebb and flow type feel. The gameplay is a 5 out of 5. It is a great gameplay. It fits the story really well. And it does everything really good. Oh. <laughs> and you see how the humor is. <laughs> so overall, there is no on online component. It is a single player RPG. Uh, you can get multiple game through plays throughs throughout the difficulty and finishing all the side quests. It is a 5 out of 5 game. Stipulation is, is only pay 60 if you can find either the version that has Stick of Truth with it. That way you're getting two games or you can get it on sale. I can't... Based on the shortness of the game, I can't recommend it at a full $60 by itself. If you can still get a day one edition which has Stick of Truth, then it's worth it because you're getting two games. Otherwise, wait for a sell, wait for it to go down, but at the end of the day, do play this game. Even if you have to rent it from Gamefly or Redbox or something, play South Park Stick of Truth. On normal difficulty and easy difficulty, you can finish it in about 20 hours. 
if you are not really good at RPGs, the hardest difficulty in the game, which is Mastermind difficulty, <clears throat> it might take you closer to 30 to 40. It's an RPG in full aspect, but it is a shorter RPG. So, as I said, that is the review of South Park Fractured But Whole. And I'll be back in a few days with Shadow of War. I'll also have uh, the uh, tips for when starting Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen coming up in the next few days. Until next time, this is Omega Zone Gaming. Like if you like, sub if you want. Leave a comment if you feel the need, and I am out.